Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Taco Rick channel as my truck beeps at me. As you guys saw from the thumbnail, I fucked up. And specifically how I messed up was in wiring the Raptor lights themselves. Not what I showed you guys in the video, but what I tried to do to fix the problem that I was having and I ended up shorting out my whole truck. So I wanted to make this video to explain what I did wrong and show you guys how you can avoid it and not have what happened to me. Also, what I did to fix the problem is also a solution for some of you guys. So the wiring fix that I did actually applies to any of you guys that don't have auto headlights. For you guys that have daylight runners, you know that you have to have the actual switch on daylight runners for your daylight runners to come on. If it's in the off position, they're off, they don't turn on. So the wiring fix that I did has your daylight runners turning on as soon as your truck turns on. So if your truck is on, the daylight runners are on regardless if the headlights are on or off. So this might be a neat little workaround hack for you guys to check out. First off, before I show you guys the actual inner workings of under the hood, what I had to do to fix it, let me explain how I got into this issue. So you guys saw in I think two videos ago, I installed these Raptor lights right here, which First off, if you bought these Raptor lights, I would highly recommend just sending them back, get your re get your refund on Amazon, because uh, I've had these for two weeks now and they have condensation and they've started to stop working. Let me show you. So as you can see right there, these lights have condensation build up on the inside of the actual lights themselves. And this one right here, two of the four LEDs inside of the Raptor light have stopped working. So I would highly recommend if you did order these, I apologize you should 100% um, get the Amazon returns. It's like 30 day money back guarantee or whatever. I'm gonna do the same and send all these back and look for a better option for these Raptor lights. So with that out of the way, let me pop the hood and show you guys what the issue was that I was dealing with. So if you guys have not gone and watched the Raptor light video, I highly recommend you do. But at the end of it, I basically said that I was going to be utilizing this red wire right here to power my daylight runner. Well, these are the wires that go to your daylight runner. Obviously down here behind my headlights, I have a lot more wires because I have all of these halos and RGB boards and you can go check out the video on how I customized these headlights. I basically took them apart and redid all the lighting in them, painted them, etc. Got a whole video on that. But the wires that come to the headlight themselves for the daylight runners, there is a black wire, which is right there, which is your neutral, your ground. Then you have a red and a orange. Basically, I'm not sure which one is which, but one sends power to the daylight runner when the headlights are on and one sends power to the daylight runners when the headlights are off. So the brilliant me said, oh, if I just connect both of these together and connect the power wire to my Raptor lights to both of those, it'll work regardless of what power sent to it. This was a terrible idea. So after the video the next day, I was trying to do this and basically when I hooked it up to both wires, basically all the lighting went out in the truck, all the lighting. My daylight runners didn't work, my halos didn't work, my Raptor lights didn't work, my parking lights didn't work, my tail lights didn't work, I, I lost everything. So. First thing I did, I went to the fuse box. I blew the fuse for the daylight runners. That's pretty obvious, I blew that fuse. So I replaced that fuse, and then for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what the other fuse was blown. It was actually inside the truck underneath the dash, I'll show you it. But there's a fuse called tail, and that fuse is for your parking light. Why it's called tail, I have no idea. So in case you guys do this mod and you do blow those fuses, let me show you where they're at. Uh, first off, you need to get to the fuse box, which is right behind your battery inside the truck. Uh, you just, there's three latches. There's a latch here, latch here, latch here. This is hard to do with one hand, so I'm going to uh, do this. Got it. Okay. Now, you'll see I have an add a fuse in here now, and I'll explain what that is here in a second. The daylight runner fuse is this 10 amp fuse right here. So this is called DRL. It's actually in the diagram up here. So you can go through the diagram. It's called DRL. Use your fuse removal tool, which is in here, and you can move that fuse and replace that 10 amp fuse. Now let me show you in the inside of the truck where that fuse is at. So inside the truck, your uh, fuse box is actually right up here. It's that long box right there. And you can open that box up right there but the fuse for all of your parking lights is called tail. So you have to replace that fuse and then all of your parking lights will then again start working. Now, this took me absolutely the longest time ever to actually figure out what all I blew and what was going wrong because my thinking was that there was a relay switch that switched the power between the two different wires that went to the actual lights. I've been since corrected. There is one power wire that is for the parking lights that sends power to all of the lights to indicate that the parking lights need to be on and that goes to your daylight runners. But then the daylight runners have their own circuit power 
that powers them during the daylight uh, when your headlights and your parking lights aren't on. So I blew those two fuses, but actually once I replaced both those two fuses, my daylight runners still did not work during the day. When my headlights are off, they still did not work. And this is because I actually blew the ground switch on my computer that tells them to turn on and off. So if you remember in the Raptor light video, I originally tried plugging in the Ada fuse that powers the Raptor lights into the DRL fuse. And that is when I found out that the DRL fuse is a always on fuse. Regardless if the truck is on, off, the switches are on or off, this always has power, which means my Raptor lights would always be on, which we cannot use, which is why I wired it into the headlight wire over here so that they were only on when the headlights are on. You could also tap into the headlight fuse up here and it'll do the same thing. So as you can imagine, when I replaced this fuse and it still didn't work, the next logical thing was to go to the relay. So the relay box is actually back here. You can pull this cover off. And as you can see, I already wired into the relay itself. Um, but this relay back here is for your daylight runners. So this relay basically communicates with the switch in the truck to turn the daylight runners on and off. And because this fuse is always on, this is activated by a ground switch. Put this into simple terms, you have a circuit. And the circuit has to be continuously allowing electricity to flow from positive to negative, positive to negative. In this instance, the positive side is always live. So the relay is then relying on the ground to be connected. So the ground wire has to be connected to a ground source to be hard grounded for the whole entire relay circuit to be active. Basically, there is a ground signal from the computer that leaves the ground open so that the ground is not connected to anything and that is what turns them off. And the computer has to close that ground to then allow the daylight runners to turn on. And what happened is I actually fried or blew, I'm not really sure, that port on the actual computer. So my computer no longer will send a signal to my daylight runners to turn them on or off. Yes, this was a complete fuck up on myself, terrible electrician. But as you guys can kind of see, I have redone the wiring to overcome this issue. And what I've also done is basically made it so that my daylight runners and my Raptor lights automatically turn on as soon as my truck turns on. So right now I have the truck in the on position but the engine's off and my daylight runners, my Raptor lights and all that are on. As soon as I turn them off, they turn off. So let me show you guys this wiring diagram, how this all works if you have one of two cases. One, if you wanna power your Raptor lights so that they turn on automatically when your truck is on so that you don't have to have your headlights on for your Raptor lights to turn on. Basically, they're always on. Or case number two, if you have non-auto headlights, so you have the manual ones where you have to turn it, and you don't wanna remember to always have your switch on DRL, daytime running lights, two daytime running lights so that your running lights are on. If you wanna basically have it so that even if your switch is off, as soon as you turn your truck on, they turn on. You don't ever have to worry about it. This hack will work as well. So to do this, the main thing you have to find is a fuse that is active when the truck is turned on. Now, before you guys go freaking out in the comments that I'm plugging into the injector fuse and I don't wanna tamper my fuel system and all that sort of stuff, you guys need to understand what an Ada fuse does. The Ada fuse retains the same circuit path for the injector fuse. The injector fuse, the 10 amp fuse, stays as normal. It's adding a secondary fuse to do the light. So for some reason, a faulty ground or a positive and a ground wire touch and it caused issues with the Raptor lights, it'll trip the top fuse in the Ada fuse, but the injector fuse below it will stay intact. It will not cause any issues. That is how an Ada fuse works, and that's why it is the most proper way to tap into your fuse box to add power for accessories. For anyone that's an electrical geek, basically the two fuses are in parallel with each other, so that if one fuse trips, the circuit is still connected on the bottom side. That's why it is the upper one. So if the upper one trips, the bottom one is still connected. That is why you use an Ada fuse. So if you are only connecting your Raptor lights here and you want your Raptor lights to turn on when your truck turns on, all you have to do is route your power wire out of the fuse box. You do that through the wire loom here. There's some clips on the back side. You can pull up on this wire loom, open it up, and then run the power wire alongside all of the other wires. Run it out the back. I ran it through some wire loom so it's nice and clean over here, but run that power wire to your Raptor lights and connect the ground to the ground screw, which we all know is right here. We've hooked a lot of things to this. So you hook your ground wire to this, hook your power wire to the Ada fuse, and you're good to go. Now in the case of setting up your daylight runners so they are always on when your truck is on, it gets a little bit more complicated. Or in my case, you blew the internal computer fuse that tells them to turn on and you have to do this as well. So 
basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the relay back here and I'm gonna actually pull the relay out so you guys can see what it actually looks like all right so I pulled everything apart here to show you guys what you have to do so first off you need to take this relay right here out of the slot right here if you don't know what relay it is it's the only blue one in this little side box right here you take the relay off and what we're going to need to do is bend these two pins up and around these pins normally are straight up and that way they go into the pins in the relay housing itself but basically you need to bend both of those pins up so that way we can connect external cables to the two pins on the relay. What you're also going to need to do is to route this red power wire from our injector fuse. We're going to need to route it down this fuse box and into the relay box itself. So as you can see right there, I basically took this relay box. It just clipped in here on the side. You can pull it up and you can take the bottom off of this. It's just clamped on. Route these wires up in and you have your power wire here. Now I have two power wires here. One goes to the Raptor lights and one comes from the injector so that way they're in the same connection but basically all you need to do is route the power wire to here i'm tapping in my raptor lights as well so that's why i'm doing that then you need to also run a black wire to your ground screw so from our ground screw right here you have to run a black wire down around and up into the relay box itself again i'm also hooking up my raptor lights so i have the ground for the raptor lights and the ground coming from the ground screw now i have attached these little side clamps right here because they are going to connect to our actual connectors on the relay themselves so if you're looking at the relay from the top side we connect the ground to the left one we connect the power to the right one and we're all set now all we have to do is plug this back into the relay slot like I had it before. Plug it right in, nice and snug. What we just did here is we replaced that computer signal that basically completes the circuit to turn on the daylight runners. Now the circuit is now completed by truck turning on with the injector fuse. So we have the circuit closed on the ground side. So as soon as we have active power here, which comes in the form of the truck turning to the on position, it closes this relay and therefore provides power to our daylight runners and also in this case to the raptor light so i hope that little hack might be helpful for some of you guys i know this is probably like way over a lot of your guys heads and a lot of you guys don't care but i'm just kind of showing you guys that um there's a lot of options with what you can do on your vehicle in terms of the electronics the lights and stuff like that and actually understanding and teaching is something I like to do. So I'm an engineer. I have a little bit of an electrical background because I did mechanical engineering. So I know a lot about electrical circuits, fuses, all that sort of stuff. So I like to provide a little bit of educational tips, especially when I figure out a cool little hack like this that might help some of you guys. So basically to recap, there's maybe some key things you need to think about on your truck, especially if you start getting into lighting. If for some reason your daylight runners are not working, first check your daylight runner fuse, check your relay, and it might be the instance of what's happening. If for some reason your parking lights stop working, that fuse is actually inside the truck underneath of the uh, steering console, and it is called the tail fuse for some unknown reason. Then if you are someone that is adding Raptor lights to your truck, I highly recommend you get yourself an Adafuse, which comes in the kit that I got, but we already went through how these Raptor lights suck, so I wouldn't buy these ones. But you wanna hook up your Adafuse to the INJ fuse. It's a 10 amp fuse for the injectors. It will not compromise your actual fuse for the injectors, so don't worry about that. It creates a separate loop so that if the lights blow, it does not blow the fuse for the injectors. So don't worry about that. Now, if you're someone that, uh, puts Raptor lights in your truck and you want to run them so that when your truck turns on, your Raptor lights turn on, I highly recommend you get yourself a Adafuse. All you need to do is tap the power wire right here into the INJ fuse, run your power wire out into your Raptor lights, connect the ground to the ground screw on the side of the truck right here, you're good to go. If you do have manual headlights, or you run into the craziness that I ran into, you can do this fancy little trick right here with the relay so that whenever your truck is on, your daylight runners are always on. Anyways guys, this was kind of a little bit of a random video. I wanted to provide my experience of what I've ran into so far on the truck doing all of these mods and be as open and transparent as I can with you guys. So if you guys have any questions, always feel free to leave it down in the comment section down below. You can also hit me up on Instagram. My Instagram is at DJ Rick Webb because I have a DJ following I DJ. That's what all the stuff in this garage is, all my road cases and stuff like that. That's kind of like my main job. I DJ, I have to pull my big trailer with this truck. So if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, hit me up on Instagram and the DMs. Leave it down in the comment section down below. I always get back to you guys. Uh, like this video if it was informational or hit the dislike button if you did. It helps me out either way. 
And don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn on post notifications because tons of awesome new stuff is coming to the truck, including an exhaust system here in the future. So stay tuned as well as, again, I will repeat it, 10,000 subscribers is the current goal for this channel and when we hit 10,000 subscribers I am super excited because I'm going to be getting myself a sports car and we're going to be starting a secondary vehicle project. It's going to be manual. It's going to be a V8. I'm super excited and um, I'll see you guys then. Anyways, Taco Rick out. Peace.